There's worse things than maggots, you know. <laughs> Much worse. Maggots will go away if they're properly attended to. If you've got someone who has the time, who recognizes the signs, who can bring you in out of that cold pasture and fix you up in a comfy place like this. No lamb ever had it so good. Why, it's warm, and there's no draft, or at least there won't be once we fix the door. No varmints, no coyotes, no eagles, no. Should I tell you something about eagles? This is a true story, a true account. I was out in the field doing the castrating, which is something that just has to be done. Not my favorite job, but it's something that just has to be done. I set myself up next to the lean crew out there, a flat roof shelter with my best knife, and some boiling water, and a hot iron car I was with. It's a bloody business by all of I had maybe a dozen spring ram lambs to do. Had them gathered up away from the ewes. The same sort of structure you got here. Sort of fenced in structure. It was a bright, crisp type of morning. The air was real thin and you could see way out off across the pasture land. The frost was still pitched down low on the stem, close to the ground. A couple of crows, the lambs, use crying for their lost babies. That was the only sound there was. Well, I went in working for a while and all of a sudden I felt a shadow cross over. I felt it before I saw it spreading out on the ground. It felt like it feels when the clouds pass in front of the sun. Huge, dark, cold. So I looked up, expecting maybe a buzzard or a red wing, and what smacked me across the eyes but a giant eagle. Well, I'm a flyer, and I know about aeronautics, but this sucker was doing some downright suicidal antics. Coming in real low, like he was looking for a landing or something, and then pulling back up into the sky and sailing out away from me. Well, hit a couple more lands, the same thing happened. Only this time, he's even lower. I could almost feel his feathers scratching my back. I could hear him real clear. His feathers were making a sort of snapping noise. And then up he went again. Well, this time I watched him a little longer. <laughs> trying to figure out what his intentions were. And then he came. He was after those testing. Those fresh little remnants of men. Well, I thought I'd oblige him this time. So I went back to work, pretending to be occupied. And I threw some of the testes up on top of the shed roof. I was waiting for Oh, I was listening real close. I was watching the ground because I knew he'd be coming up from behind and there'd be a shadow. Nothing happened for maybe three more lambs. Then all of a sudden he came. Bam! Like a thunderbolt. He was down on that shed roof. His talons tearing up half the tar paper with him. His wings flailing the air, screaming like a bread mare. Up into the sky again. Well, I had to stand up on that one. Something brought me right up off the ground and I was yelling my head. I don't know what was coming out of me, but I was standing there with this icy feeling up my spine, just shouting my fool head. Oh, I that. I haven't felt anything like that since the first time up in a B-52. And I sat down. Went back to work. But every time I cut a lamb, I'd throw those balls up on the shed roof. And every time he'd come down like that cannonball express, 
on that schedule, and I get that same fee. And what? You listening to me? Yeah. Mm. Telling it to the land. It's all to me. Uh, you've heard it before. You know, I'm taking a statement. 